Good to see you. And if you watch us live, you might be our 12,640th viewer to Think Tech Hawaii's Human Main Architecture, which happens to be the 238th episode. And we're broadcasting live from, we thought we would be from three different almost continents of the world, but the Soto R. Bishop Museum historian archivist had to rush back to his mother. So it's just gonna be two locations with our mid-century modern master, Ron Lindgren, back in the west coast of the mainland of the United States of America in his Long Beach. Hi, Ron. Hello, everyone. Good to have you back. And wouldn't you wish so me back in or near Munich, Germany? If we can get the first slide up, the actual first slide up or the second, this one here. So um, Ron, um, in these days, about five weeks ago, um, the Ukraine war has started. So we continue to have a hard time. Uh, the show's title being Human Humane Architecture how can we even talk about it when the foundations of humanity are torpedoed, right? And violated in such a devastating way. And when we look at the picture at the bottom right, this is the condition that the Ukrainians are facing. This is temperate climate. It's less than a day driving away from here, like 19 hours or so if you map it. And this is what happened. There are no facades anymore. Uh, on these buildings, and we're not yet through the heating season. So actually, uh, this is the spring of the year where the temperatures are roller coasting. They're going up and down, and next week they're going down again. So this is really, really tragic. And especially when we go back to where we are investigating back in Honolulu, Hawaii, because uh, we were we were seeing something, and you were the one uh, suggesting to put this here because it looks like we're talking about one of the same building, but it's actually not. It's two different buildings that look awfully the same. And the top one um, is uh, the, I forgot the name even. Oh, the Azure. Yes, it's, it's the Azure Alamoana. It's the Azure, thank you for helping me out in my senior moment here. And the <laughs> second one in between is the park that's still under development. So we only rely on uh, the proposed images, but we can be uh, assured that it will look pretty much not unlike. And this one is the most recent one we're looking at. This is the Kapiolani residences that we keep looking at. And so let's go to the next slide and do our uh, detective investigation because we got our spirits back up and the show quote at the top right was looking at things that we thought are really, really Hawaiian as the best rainbows in the world we have and uh, kooky googie architecture with, uh, as you guys taught me, these kind of scallop-shaped um, lanais. And then, of course, some convertible cruising and some fellow pi and Benz mobile there. And a sibling building we actually have uh, next to the Capulani residences. And this is what we're looking at here. Same theme, and let's go to the next slide. And uh, you wanna tell us which building that is? You remember, Ron, is it clear enough to read or have you memorized what it's called? Yeah, uh, the fact is when we saw that first slide and saw those two buildings that look so much like each other, when I, when I hear that these are high-rise residences, uh, to me, of course, they, they appear pretty cold and formal and so buttoned up that they could be sort of corporate office buildings. But the building that we looked at in the previous slide and this slide is something that was built 50 years ago, originally known as the Chateau Blue Apartments. Uh, and now it's the Alamoana, uh, the Alamoana Tower uh, Apartments. And this is the ground level. Uh, this I, I haven't seen in person in Hawaii. and. Uh, it, it does seem sort of disorganized as storefronts and entries to garages. There's no welcoming uh, gesture for one to arrive at your elevator lobby and, and whisk you up to your, your room in the sky. At least no indication of, of such in this particular yeah. photograph. 
Yeah, that's true. However, there is, and I remember when the restaurant that was in there was still in operation. At the very left, you got that canopy that cantilevers out that has the same kind of scallopy pattern at its edge. And then there's a, there's a little fat place there next to it. And there's, I think, um, you know, we have, I have my co-producer Yoni with me here today, here sitting next to me. He's a big bubble tea fan. So he might like to go to the bubble tea store at the very bottom right. So even though it is not like a port cochere as you have designed the best ones on the island, but at least it looks like a gritty place where there are places to go and everything seems to be like low key. We would also assume it's sort of affordable, right? That's another issue that we're addressing or facing on the island. And let's go to the next slide. Oh, it's, and the building is by Edwin Bauer, by the way, as you said, built in 1970. And it's featured here on this website, it's called the Mod Traveler. So it's certainly a building of significance, especially for us, Dokomomoas. Uh, just reminding the audience that you've been our keynote speaker about probably more than two years ago. But here come the two buildings next to each other, and I'll let you uh, respond to that, how that occurs to you. Yeah, this is a wonderful juxtaposition of uh, the original Chateau Blue, now Alamoana Apartments, on the left, and the 45 stories of the uh, copy only residences. And their contrast at, at looking at them from some distance is something we'll be talking about in some detail. And it's, it's a fine opportunity to look at the chateau, which is more obviously residential, much more interesting uh, than the sort of corporate office building residences to the right. We'll have to look at them a little more closely to see those differences. And I think the next slide uh, provides that opportunity. Exactly. Yeah, there, there we are. Uh, at the right, uh, we're looking at, at the top right, uh, top right at the plan of the Kapilani residences and a closer look of their buttoned up and uh, tight uh, facade, which only provides very shallow balconies. Now, in contrast to that look, to the left is the original uh, Chateau Blue. Obviously, much more interesting. The, the balcony that, that runs across the entire width of each unit, one half of it is deep enough to be called a real lanai. You could have a dining table and four chairs out there. The rest of the balcony becomes a step, step out balcony at the bedroom. There's the interestingly formed scallops in the uh, balcony slabs that also look quirky and interesting and in a way it's tropical. For me, it's, it's the use of metal railings that are such an improvement over the glass railings at the right. The metal railings provide detail. They also provide uh, and help provide along with the, the, the cantilevering, some real shadow play over the face of the building. There is no shadow play of the building next door. And it's also railings that are, that are like this with just open metal provide a, an element of human scale because everyone recognizes what the height of the top of a railing is from a, a floor. Absolutely. And then compare it to the right. And, and you, you were the ones who I should have done that because I'm the educator also. But you said, Martin, where's the floor plan? I want to study the floor plan. And I don't want to see what's behind these facades. And so you look deeper into the plan and share that with us. Yeah, when, when we look, uh, in fact, I think if we look at the, at the next slide, uh, that might help me to, yeah, here we go. This is looking at a number of the uh, rooms and units in the Kapiolani uh, residences. And you can see that there are some very shallow balconies that are either uh, tucked in within the structural frame or poked out from the structural frame, uh, less than four feet deep. Um, and next to them, interspersed with that, is this very taut glazed skin. Now it turns out everywhere where there's a balcony shown, there is a living room behind it. Where, the, where this blue glass is shown, there are bedrooms. And rather oddly, in those bedrooms, glazed bedrooms from floor to ceiling, there is a, uh, a glass louver that you can can be opened very, very slightly 
uh, because of child safety issues, uh, it can only be open about four inches wide at the bottom. Otherwise, uh, believe it or not, toddlers can slip through that as they can slip through railings that are further apart than four inches. Uh, this seems to be an attempt to provide some actual ventilation to the bedroom, but it's so limited in the fact that it can only be cracked open and nothing more. Uh, a next slide would bring up some more uh, items of discussion. Now we're, we're talking about units, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, there are some one bedroom units, but the two and three bedroom units go for over a million dollars a piece. Now these are, uh, marketed as luxury condos. Uh, but they also say, and I have to quote this because it's something I so disagree with. Quote, each condominium has a lanai to enjoy the beautiful weather that Hawaii has to offer its residences. Well, this is, is patently not so, as you can see by this, this close up of the balconies. Uh, the, 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 they're too shallow to inhabit. And then if one were actually able to zoom in on one of the units, you would find that these things really are, are not much more than outdoor mechanical spaces because there is a remote air conditioning unit sitting on the floor of each balcony. And not only that, but next to it is an unsightly jumble of four separate junction boxes and exposed conduits that just trail up and down the wall. Uh, and to my horror, when I saw some real estate ads taken from inside the living room of these luxury units, when you're inside looking out, you look, one third of your view is blocked by the view of the back of this of this uh, air conditioning unit. Something that uh, also I have to comment on is this blue tinted glazing uh, is, is really an odd choice especially because what it does inside. When you're sitting down in the living room and looking out, you first look through blue tinted glass, which is floor to ceiling and wall to wall, of which only the center third opens. But uh, your view is tinted by the blue. But then the glass railings are also tinted blue. It's like looking to, uh, you know, to the view through two pair of blue sunglasses. What actually happens, as shown by photographs provided by the developer himself, is that the, the view of greenery, of uh, the ocean, of the tropical uh, view beyond you, uh, which is certainly one of, of an advantage of being in a high rise, uh, is completely washed out in tones of blue. You cannot see green through the double layer of, of, of these odd glass filters. Uh, and I'll, I'll make one last comment in looking at the plan and looking at this balcony. There are two units on each floor where privacy between units is completely ignored. There, there's a one bedroom and a studio located right adjacent to the elevator core where you step out of one unit and you look at 45 degrees directly back into the bedroom of the adjoining unit. The only bedroom privacy, if you happen to be pattering around in your room naked coming out of the shower or your dressing or whatever, is if you pull the drapes. This is a, an egregious lack of privacy. And all of this brings up the fact that people who have visited these units before buying them, they see that the balcony can't be inhabited. Uh, it's too small, except maybe to put uh, a potted plant out there. Maybe a, a tiny end table is too small to dine. You certainly could, can't put an armchair out there and sit because it's not wide enough. But these are million dollar units, luxury units. And you're looking again at, quote, the, the back end of uh, a piece of uh, air conditioning equipment the view is completely, the, the view of, of real nature is absolutely screened away through having to see it through blue tint. And your lanai is, is, has all sorts of mechanical and electrical equipment exposed, which is the cheapest sort of subcontracting for electrical and mechanical systems possible. 
your 30 year mortgage is buying you this. Oh boy. Yeah. And try, we still are puzzled trying to understand that. And just to illustrate what you just said, I have to have my sunglasses here. And they're unfortunately or coincidentally, you know, green and not blue, but I'm putting here glasses over glasses because that's what you're saying is happening in this building, right? I happen to know that the developer is not from Hawaii. He's actually from Korea. And so I, I know that Korea has exactly the same climate that I'm very familiar with, with here, which is tempered. And if we, Max, can we go back to the previous slide for one more time? Um, and we already know from previous shows at the top right, the show quote, this is a building that we have been designing in Germany, which is called the tree uh, top apartments. It has glass guardrails because the, the majority of the year is rather cold and not warm. So you actually feel comfortable and it blocks the cold wind. And uh, also the building, the lanai's are oriented south. And so they basically shade the unit. And in the winter time, what becomes increasingly important, as we were just talking about before the show, when you guys brought up and said our uh, minister of um, secretary of um, economy has basically pushed the alert button, the first phase of, of the warning of, uh, of natural gas, uh, basically scarcity. And so in these days, this is very, very important that we heat ourselves with uh, basically post-fossil systems, uh, passive solar, geothermal, and things like that. That being said, what works in Germany does not work in Hawaii. What works in Korea does not work in Hawaii. We have to say that. And you know, still kind of puzzled, I, I was thinking about what's with all this blue glass, which by the way, Kurt Sandburn has been writing a questioning article some long time ago. And here I was looking, uh, all of a sudden when I was driving uh, around the island, um, I was seeing uh, something at, uh, which is where Kurt, by the way, as an activist journalist, has prevented some detrimental developments that would have looked overlooked over that dam, over that berm, where Hawaii Kai is sort of scarily creeping up on the coast. And he prevented that in his brave function of an activist journalist. And while driving by there, I saw these three guys here. And one guy is wearing his swim trunks and a beanie. And why would you do that? And I found this article here that tries to explain and the last paragraph says that, or we all just remembered what Steve McQueen, Mac DeMarco, Tyler, the creator, and Bill Murphy have in common. They all wear tiny hats and they all look really fucking cool, quote unquote. And maybe that is it, right? Maybe these people just look at what in the majority of the world's high rises have, no matter where its climate or culture is, and they just basically import that in an invasive way because they think it's cool but it is not cool because it makes you hot and doesn't keep you cool if you go to the next one the one that we had previously uh if you could read and i remember it when i took the picture the brand on these uh, single wall unit ac units uh, guess is what it's samsung which happens to be korean and so this is an all korean development and all korean systems and technology and uh, get us out of depression here, Ron. Let's go to the next slide and look at what ironically is right next to it, at least if you take that position to, to look at it as I did when I took the picture. Yeah, this, this is a picture of, again, another side to the right. It's another side of the 45 story, 485 unit Kapiolani residences. Uh, which sort of looked like a, a, a cold off-putting office block. But right next to it is uh, the Pan Am office building. It doesn't have lanai's, but in its, in its detailing and in its form and in its shadow play along the elevations, this looks ironically more residential than does the so-called residential tower next to it. I'd wait, make one other comment too, is, is all of these new high-rise condominium towers that we're looking at illustrate the scarcity of housing in the United States and in Hawaii. Because we've, I, I'm, I've really closely studied plans and 
photographs of the interiors and so forth of the Kapiolani residences. And they have such egregious and poor planning elements at the, both at the large scale and the small scale that it surprises me that all 485 of these units were sold even after prospective clients must have seen these units and seen those problematic areas like air conditioning on uninhabitable lanais and views uh, turn into blue miasmas through a blue tinted glass for some ungodly reason uh, and floor plans that for some people mean that they have no bedroom privacy from an next door unit without closing curtains. Uh, and yet they sell like hotcakes because there is this serious problem of a housing shortage. Absolutely. And then the question is, okay, how could you sort of evolve from the Pan Am building that you said is perfectly self-shading itself. So it's tropical brutalism. And the nature of tropical brutalism is volcrete, is that volcanic concrete that is exposing and celebrating its ingredients that are local. So the local basalt as aggregate and as sand is as the show quote pictures at the bottom left clearly show uh, exposed and celebrated to show I am local, right? Versus the other one says, I am invasive or I, I have to put makeup on for some reason that we are still sort of puzzled about, right? So how to move on from that, how to evolve that tropical exotic nature. Next slide. And this is something you uh, showed uh, particular interest in because this is, was under development by me with the emerging generation just before we met. And it's pretty much trying to uh, what, uh, when uh, Jay Fidel did this show with my colleague, uh, Professor Park, who was looking into the uh, Kapilani residences and uh, potential of optimization, we, this is based on optimization as well to basically cut things down to the essence to have a central circulation core from that one, basically slabs, fourth slabs are cantilevered in, in uh, what we call the split level way, so offset. So you won't have to overcome an entire floor. You can basically cascade down. It's like a continuous cascading landscape. And particularly at the bottom uh, right, uh, we see uh, beautifully hand um, drawn by one of the team members the, the, the street situation, there's a farmer's market where they sell the, 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 the produce they, they, they grow in the building. They can dry their laundry there and they have uh, what replaces the invasive glass curtain wall is here a water curtain wall because only in Hawaii we don't have the 100% saturated um, humidity that we have in the subtropics. So this is another sort of investigation and experiment and in contrast to that, let's look how the Kapiolani residences look from the other side at the street level. Next slide, and you tell me, Ron. Next slide for that. There you go. Well, this, this development has literally killed the life of a street. Now, admittedly, there's some situations involved in, in what the uh, residences are located adjacent to, but this, this is urban death and it's planned urban death. And I'll leave you to describe really what, what these, these two buildings that relate to each other are. Yeah, and the, the one to the right in defense of it, it is the backside of the Alamoana Mall and having designed, um, community grocery stores, I'm very aware of the backside syndrome of that typology. But at least when you look at the detail at the very right, they kind of fluted the, uh, the concrete. So they gave it, you know, the attention of scale of tactility. But the one on the left has a sort of prison grating, so you can't break in. And the, the top ones, you don't even want to call it engineering because that would be an insult to an intelligent profession, right? This is just, as you said, the developer been throwing something together, the cheapest way to sell it for the priciest, you know, uh, profit, right? That's, that's just, you know, there's no other way to, to judge this here. 
And while uh, the last two minutes of the show go to the final slide, the next slide, just across the street here, there is a building that isn't the finest. It's from the 80s. It's somewhere hermetic, uh, tries to do some, which you uh, are the master in structural expressionism. It more mimics that than really doing it. But one has to say this parking, parking plinth at least has some ambitions. You see this tubular post and then these, uh, you know, um, rectilinear beams are hung into it. And there's some play with tectonics and assembly. So there's some thought to it. There's some sophistication to it. There's some, there's some. Yeah, and, and if you look, if you look closely, you can see too that there are actually some palm trees planted up very closely to, to the building. So there's some attempt to humanize uh, the, the facade of a parking garage, whereas in the previous slide, there was no attempt. And those people who live in the uh, Kapiolani residences certainly get out and walk around their neighborhood, and, and they find themselves walking down these dead streets. Absolutely. So we're at the end of this week's observation. We will continue to look at if there is some downtown funk, as Bruno Mars calls it in his song, uh, versus what we have seen so far, which is nothing but midtown flunk. So uh, stay excited and stay tuned. And until then, please stay tropically exotic, exotically tropic, and see Ron and DeSoto back and everyone else next week. Bye bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.